Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. Today's video is sponsored by The Coldest Water. And uh, also wanted, again, to thank James for the coffee. And um, because Tanzania Peaberry is one of my favorites, and this is absolutely uh, fantastic. So today, we're going to talk about the winner of the my winner for Film February. Uh, it's Sunday the 25th, and 25th, is that the right date? I'm recording this a few days ahead of time. I apologize. Um, so I, I know that Andrew's video is going live sometime today, and I don't know about everybody else's, but I know who my winner is, and so I wanted to release the video. Now, uh, I also want this video to help everybody who is keeping an eye on the end of this year and my end of year photo contest. So what I did was I picked out five rolls of film. Honestly, uh, let me tell you right now, any one of the people who took these five rolls of film could very easily have won the, my prize. Let me grab my prize really quickly. For those of you, for those of you who don't recall what my prize was, it is this eighth generation prototype five by seven pinhole camera. Now, as, as I've mentioned in passing on this channel, tentatively on August 1st of this year, uh, I'm gonna go to Kickstarter with a lineup of cameras built like this. There are a couple of hurdles to get through. I need to finish getting sample photos with the pre-production units that I have in four by five, five by seven and eight by 10. And um, the, uh, the Kickstarter campaign itself is about 80% written slated to go live August 1st, pending Kickstarter approval, uh, and so on and so forth. But this is the eighth generation prototype of the 5x7, and uh, was the final prototype before the pre-production units that I'm shooting with right now. So it is uh, got a few quirks that still worked out, but it takes very interesting photos. So when I sat down to look at the... Um, Winners, what I did was I picked out the, the, the best roles, the ones that I thought were the best, the ones that I wish I had taken. And for all five of these roles, that's true. I wish I had taken them. And the one that I picked was the one who I thought, whose image aesthetic I felt best aligned with this camera and who I thought would actually be the most inclined to use it photographically. So... Um, <clears throat> So the, the five, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about a few photos from the four runners up, and uh, then we'll look at the entire role of the winner. So the four, so the, the four runners up are, I apologize, forget if I mispronounce your name here, Dragna Rake, James Estes, Lawrence Memorno, and Pablo Camus Oyarzun. I'm sure I got the last part of your last name wrong, Pablo, and I apologize. So those are the runners up. And what I want to do is give everybody who's got their eye on my end of year contest the ability to kind of read the tea leaves about what I'll be looking for. So we're going to start with a few photos from Dragna. And Dragna's role was stunning. It, it had all of these... Um, different shots that were like partial shots. Like if, if you handed me one of these in prints and said, as a print and said, this is a crop, I'd be like, yeah, it's, that's a crop. But these are the full shots and all of them, they're like looking at little, if you've ever woken up from a dream and you have like little bits of, no one wants to see that Steinbeck. And you have little bits of that dream in your memory that's exactly what this entire role is like. It has that feeling, it has that, so, there's a sort of ethereal softness to the images. Uh, all of them feel like, like they're, they're on the cusp of having this sort of super deep meaning and, and it feels like you can just kind of grab it, you're almost there but you can't quite, 
you know, what, what is the missing element that makes this super meaningful? And um, just a really consistent roll of film really demonstrated that you can sit around your house and take a really high quality set of images if you have the creative vision to do so. And these are really good photos. Looks like literally it was just taken in the span of maybe a half hour or an hour in someone's kitchen. So exceptionally well done. Um, and let me just say all five of these roles, it was very hard for me to pick between the five, uh, the five roles and the winner. And it really could have gone any way with all of them. So the next one we're going to look at is from James Estes. And James had this role of, of shots. They were all super soft and had this really glowy look about them. And um, some of them, like this, this building here, really wonderful composition, like a nice sort of flat composition, but it works really well for the subject. And then some of the other ones have a little bit more depth to them. I felt the role was a little bit less consistent than, than the other ones that we're gonna look at here, but that the images that really hit it out of the park are absolute stunners. Um, so fan, fantastic, fantastic role, James. Next, we're gonna look at, if I can get down here to remember who it is, that's the winner. We're gonna skip there for now. Um, Next, we're gonna look at Lawrence Memorno's shots. Lawrence sent in a roll of film where every single shot was a double exposure, and it was exceptionally well used. Every shot is a picture of a person with a mask on or a group of people, and then that exact same person in the same setting uh, with their mask off. And the way it looks like he did these is, is absolutely exceptional and very thoughtful. Uh, he had to have used a tripod for most of these. And so he did, did a double exposure, had the person then change their pose, take their mask off, or, uh, and then took a second shot. So all of the surroundings makes it look like a single frame with the exception of a couple of shots that look like they were handheld. And then, um, and that's really good because all the backgrounds are in focus and they're stable. And then we have these people who are sort of like half ghosts superimposed over themselves. Very fun, very playful, uh, use of the double exposure and also a really good way to explore the uh, last year of mask wearing and pandemic life. All right, and then our, our last runner up, in big air quotes, comes from Pablo. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna butcher your name a second time. But these are all angled little parts of buildings. The entire role is this this playing of with shape, tone, and color. Really exceptional eye for how to capture just parts of a building. And I'm, I'm gonna guess these are all the same building, just based on the colors and the, the construction style. Honestly, the only photos in here I would take out would be, uh, Pablo, for, this is for you. There's one with a garage door and there's a couple with security cameras um, because those sort of, with the way that these images are structured, it, the building loses its buildingness. And the, the photos could very easily just be pieces of textured paper cut to different shapes and laid out to make it look like they're buildings. And so what's happened is this building now becomes this very abstract set of shapes and colors. And to that end, the security cameras and the garage door really steal that element of the image from those handful of pictures. They, they honestly, uh, I mean, there's nothing here that like cost you the win. The, the, the four runners up, all of you guys were equivalently good and had just stunning, stunning work. Like I said, all four of these rolls of film, I wish I had taken them. There's photos in here in all four of your guys' rolls of film that are gonna be better than anything I take this year. Uh, I, I promise you that. So magnificent work from, from our four runners up, which leads us to the winner and the person who's taking home the five by seven um, camera prototype. Now I picked this role and this person to win because I mean, this was the most consistent role 
in the contest. Every single photo is magnificent. It's a wonderful use of the six by seven format, uh, a wonderful use of black and white, and um, just the image quality is staggering. Every single photo in this, on this roll is incredible. If somebody handed me these 10 photos and said, these are someone's best work from this year, I would have said, that's a really accomplished year. They did very well. It's one roll of film. It's, I, 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 reading the notes from the other judges, let me just say, I am not the only judge who looked at these photos and was absolutely flabbergasted at how good this roll was. So this first shot here from, uh, from Jeremy Mudd is a rainy tree-lined uh, road. The reflections in the road or sidewalk are really fantastic. The, 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 I'm not normally one who says, yeah, stick your camera in the middle of a road and take a picture of converging lines. I think that's about the most boring photo that can possibly be taken. Um, but this does it really well because of the atmosphere and the reflections. This next shot here, which shows a monument of some kind, has such a staggering symmetry across the entire image. You get the horizontal symmetry with the reflections, and you get, uh, I'm sorry, vertical symmetry with the reflections, and you get horizontal symmetry with the way that there are trees evenly spaced across, it, across the image left to right. And then the monument itself is very symmetrical. And one thing you're going to notice, this whole roll is technically spot on. Every single horizon is level. Every single image is properly exposed. There's amazing use of tone and, uh, and, and image composition in every one of these shots. This third one is a tree in fog. And if you went back and took this shot when there was no fog, it would be incredibly boring. The atmosphere in this image is really staggering in the way that the trees in the background sort of start to disappear into the fog. And then, so there, there you have this like light gray fog and then these slightly darker gray trees, and then this one black tree. So really good work. This next one is a single tree in fog, and it does actually like this image a little bit better than the previous one because it is a more minimalist. And this is a really good use of a minimalist image structure because realistically what you have is a silhouette in fog. And it is uh, all you, all, the subject is the beauty of this tree and the, the point of the image is the beauty of this tree and the way that it's grown. This next shot is a bench. Um, kind of feel like it's one of the two weaker images on the roll of film. That said, it's a fantastic image. The way that the, the deadfall leaves on the ground here add a whole lot of texture that contrasts with the smoothness of the concrete and the wood in the metal of the bench, but also the absolute lack of detail within the fog. There is some really complex interplay of tone of uh, textures going on in this image. And I think it is, uh, it is not one I would have stopped to have taken. And I think that is uh, a, a testament to how good Jeremy's eye was in looking at this image and, and seeing the potential in it. So very good work. This next shot is another set of trees in fog. And uh, at first I thought that this was a mistake, like the horizon didn't look level, but the horizon is level. You can tell by the way the trees are growing. And um, I think this one works really well because there's, there's sort of like this pattern, like is, is there, are these rows of trees? It kind of looks like it, but with the perspective, they also look just like a randomly, a, a random growth forest, like a natural forest would. And then, of course, the shape of all of the trees, completely devoid of leaves in the fog, is, uh, with, with the fog in the background, really absolutely fantastic. This next shot, I think, is legitimately the weakest on the roll. It's, it's uh, got the, the, the converging lines, and it's uh, basically horizon line with, uh, looks like either a, a road or a footpath with some guardrails on the side. Um, for, from a use of converging lines perspective, it's, it's a good image in that regard. It's, I, there's nothing wrong with the image. It's just the least visually interesting on the roll. 
This next one here is stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, this is a tree in water with some uh, shoots growing up next to it and the texture on the tree and the, the ability of this roll of this, of this image to capture so much shadow detail without the highlights being completely blown out. Honestly, do not ho know how you did this straight out of camera. I am absolutely stupefied by how technically perfect an image this is. Uh, it's amazing. This next shot is uh, a stand of trees in water. Only thing I don't like about this shot is that little piece of, of grass or plant in the foreground. I find that distracting. Probably nothing you could have done to get it out of there, but um, the rest of the shot I think is really good. Uh, I, might ha I might have suggested lifting your camera a little bit higher on this to, to get rid of that thing in the front and also get the tops of the, those trees on the left. But like that's super nitpicky stuff. This is a very, very good image. This next one here is a tree that is out in the water with the fog in the background and uh, just an, another really amazing capture from a, a technical and creative standpoint. The uh, composition is very good. You have uh, the shapes and the way that the shapes interplay with light and shadow, really good. Just wonderfully, uh, a wonderfully visceral image. The textures in here com contrasting the, the bark of the tree with the mud, with the smoothness of the water, and the texture sapping nature of fog. It's just a, so much going on here that's really good. So um, just, man, this roll just keeps, and, and that's the last shot on the roll because there's 10 of them It's because it's six by seven. Just absolutely amazing work, Jeremy. Uh, seriously, if I had taken that role, I suspect that all, most of it would have ended up in my, my best photos of the year collection. I am, I am really in awe. So, Jeremy, you are the first person in the world besides me who is going to get to have a 5119 cameras bamboo pinhole camera. So I hope you have a couple of 5x7 film backs. Uh, this will take the older wood ones as well as the newer Fidelity and so forth. And uh, I will send this to you as soon as Andrew lets me know how. And uh, I hope you really do get some good use out of this. And I hope that it is something that complements your shooting style very well and opens up some creative, uh, some creative avenues for you. So uh, that is it. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And I hope that everything that we talked about today was really informative with what sort of things I was looking for with photos. I hope that the images you saw today give you some really good ideas about your own creative journey. And I hope that it also gave you some insight into some of the things I'm gonna be looking for in my December photo contest so that you can think about those to improve your work over the course of the year as you're taking photos for that contest. See everybody in the next Cameras and Coffee.